Let's go to uh, Dustin in Sanford, Florida. What's up, Dustin? Hey, what's up, brother? Just hanging out. How are you doing today? Uh, dude, I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm running this <laughs> this scam over here called a uh, YouTube show. It's awesome. <laughs> well, it's working. It's working, man. I yes. appreciate everything you do, brother. Thank you, man. So what's up, brother? How can I help? Um, so I've got like... 50 million different changes going on in life right now. Um, and I'm just trying to, and I, just, I guess that's just the season um, that I'm in. But the big question um, I guess I really have with everything um, is um, with the current transition, uh, transitioning out of the military um, into civilian life. And how long you been in? Uh, I did uh, eight and a half years. Um, what was your role? Um, for those years, um, I was uh, infantry, um, and then the last half of that was uh, aviation. I uh, worked on uh, helicopters. Oh, so you've seen it, huh? Yeah, man. Yeah, uh, hmm. all the nitty gritty stuff. All and, of it. Yeah, yeah, and it's like I'm at this um, turning point in my life where, for the first time, I'm really getting to make my own decisions and. I guess my the the question um, is: Do I wear that um, my service time as a badge of pride and honor, or whatever, or do I just put it all behind me and just completely isolate, not necessarily isolate, but leave that military community behind? Hmm. What's the What's the impetus? What's that? What Why? You've boxed yourself into an either or. Why do you feel the need to make that call? I think a lot of it for me is like we've just moved, moved it. You know, we just moved into a new house. And, you know, for the first time, like I don't have to put on the uniform every day. Mm. Um, and so, like, I've got a tough box in the middle of my living room right now. Um, like filling up with, you know, uniforms and stuff. Mm. And I look at that and um, like every time I open it, like my heart starts racing. Yeah. Why does it start racing? I think a lot of it for me is um, just a lot of like the mental um, things, I guess I just haven't like processed. Um, Can I tell you what I think it is? Yeah. You've seen a lot of stuff, right? You've seen a lot of the worst of the worst and you've seen the word good wrapped up in some pretty messy evil. And you've seen the word evil wrapped up in like, that's not so bad, right? You've seen it all. Mm. <sighs> And when we say see it all, people, most people have watched the movies and you've seen it and experienced it and felt it. I don't necessarily think that's what it is. For the last eight years, so let's just say decade, you've had a purpose and a mission and a role. And you've had people who manicured every moment of your day. Mm-hmm. And more importantly, you fixed a helicopter surrounded by sand and smoke and other people had guns and they were laying their life on the line so you could do your job. You have an insight into what tribe and community and friendship and loyalty looks like that most people will never understand. And... I think this is completely me, okay? I think a big part of the PTSD crisis that we have from people returning is we drop them off and say, go make good choices. And here's some pamphlets, go get them. And it's unmooring. Yes, they've seen hard things, but if you look at the trauma literature, people who experience hard things in the context of loving adult relationships do okay over time. And I think your body knows 
more than I will ever know. We're about to be real, real lonely. We're about to find ourselves out in the middle of a battlefield and our team left us and we know what that means, right? Mm -hmm. That's my guess, is that you are, you're losing or you are opting out of everything. And that doesn't mean it's the wrong thing. It's actually the right thing for you, man. You've put in, you put in your decade, it's time, it's cool. I think your body knows that. Is that fair? Tell, I, I, man, I'm, I'm, I haven't come home from combat veteran world, so you could tell me I'm off. No, no. I, I mean, and that's it. I think a lot of it is like, you know, we've, well, like I said, we just, we just, uh, I got out um, while living in Hawaii. And so we're transitioning from Hawaii, and now we're living all the way completely on the other move to the other side of the the country we're down in florida now and so it's like adjusting to that it, it's you know adjusting to a new work environment a new work community and like um, you know trying to make all these new adjustments into things and trying to can I, can I, like your language is that of a car mechanic. I need to make an, or, or a helicopter mechanic, right? Yeah. I've got to make an adjustment here. I got to tighten this rolling girder spring thing over here and the, right? Let me challenge you to not look at what's before you as a series of knobs to turn and wrenches to crank. For the first time in a long time, you are going to have to feel stuff. And feeling stuff in many ways would have got you killed the last decade. And now it's the thing that's going to keep you alive. And it's a set of skills that you don't have. And so you're going to have to practice it. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Mm -hmm, definitely. And I mean, I'm, tr I'm trying. Like, Of course uh, you are. Of course, dude, you're awesome. Like, <laughs> yeah, of course you are, man. Like, Don't hear me clowning on you. I just want to give you a different, like, you're going to, you are naturally going to try to solve problems with the way that you've, solved problems before and you have had the opportunity to solve problems with bullets flying at you and with other people with people's like dying or dead next to you like you've had to solve problems that, and so it's natural that man all this change all this chaos all this ah i'm gonna go back to what i know and what i've been trained to do which is to break this thing down and to adjust right right and like you know I, i'm we just like last night um, had our first night of like small groups and like trying to get plugged in with that and and hey um, that's the worst man right it, it's, it's like is the worst because the last time they sent you to basic and y'all did push ups and PT <laughs> you did all this crap together and you looked up six months later and you were a you you were one. And now you're sitting around with a bunch of like suburban dads, like, hey man, you know what's really tough? The air conditioning. And you're like, nope, not tough. <laughs> not tough. <laughs> um, and uh, my lawnmower wouldn't start. It's, it's Obama's fault. And you're like, nope, nope, not a thing. And, right. So you've got this ringside seat. And the challenge for you is to choose, and it's going to be hard, is to choose to find community in new places. Mm hmm. And dude, it's the, <laughs> you're, how old are you? 30, 31? Uh, 30, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's the worst. It's, the, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the worst. Making friends as a 30 and four year old, it's the worst, but you have to have people in your tribe and your gang, and you are going to have to, all veterans are, have to understand that it won't be like it was. And dude, you and I both know veterans who are 55 and whenever they get together, they go back and tell stories back from they were 19. The same as you and I both have like, yeah, bros who are high school football heroes and they get together and they tell the same football stories. And here's why. Cause that's the last time they were a part of something bigger than themselves. And the military gives you that in an extraordinary way. And the mission before you now is I, you are going to have to opt into that. It's not going to be presented for you. And that's just a set of skills, man. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, what's your new, what's your new, what's your new mission? Um, so n currently like job wise. 
Well, like, well played. No, what's your new <laughs> mission? Your job um, will feed your mission. What is your, what's your objective? Um, I don't know. Right now, I'm just trying to... Um, That's it. Booyah! I don't even know what your answer is. <laughs> You, you're going to be feel aimless and purposeless. And when your body's untethered, then your body will ring the anxiety alarms. And when you don't have people in your life, you don't have a gang in your corner, um, your body will ring the anxiety alarms. And then it's going to be hard to get out of bed. You're going to snap at your wife. You're going to just roll your eyes at some dude who's wearing loafers and no socks. And he's like, let me tell you what's going on in the world. And you'll be like, dude, just shut up. You don't know. <laughs> right. and, and all of that is going to feel like the problem. That, that box full of your gear in the middle of your living room is going to feel like the problem and it's not. What's your mission? I think it's just um, just trying to get like reconnected, like my wife, kids, um, like community around me, and everything. It's just what's your mission? Because I mean, because I think it's a lot of it's just been like being, yeah, just being lonely right now. That's like right. that sucks to say that out loud, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because it's just like I feel like at times like you know, that person in our, in our room. And I'm like, Hey, like, let's, you know, talk about whatever. And there all these, you know, I work with a bunch of, um, veteran guys and it's like, they just, it's like constantly like, Oh yeah. Back when I was in the army too. I'm like, dude, I don't want to talk about that. Yeah. Like it's, it's exhausting. It's like, I just want like, people and that's like where it where it all boils down to it's like i feel like in one direction like i want to put it all like the military and everything like behind me and and move on but i'm constantly surrounded by other people that have been in that community and it's like i don't necessarily know if i want to be there you know yeah like, totally and you find yourself in in the odd man out right you're in no man's land Right. Which is a really lonely, unmooring place to be. So I, I, I did, I, uh, Jenna and Kelly, they let me know this call was coming. So I reached mm -hmm. out to two different people. One is a friend of mine and she's actually on deployment right now. Um, she's wrapping up like in two months. And then another one is a close buddy of mine who's a SEAL who's just rolling off. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the roll off process for them, for, for him has been a, a, a quite a season. And I just asked them that question because I get the, that question you're asking makes sense. Is this just a chapter of my life and now I move on and I got to start wearing really short khaki shorts? Like, is this, is this what's next? Um, and, or do I have to just keep like talking about military stuff for the rest of my life? Is that forever? Right. And do I cut this group out? Do I cut off? And so I'm going to read you directly what they wrote me. Is that cool? Yeah, man. They have a better, they get to, I've sat with a bajillion vets. They're living it and I have it and I want to honor their voice, okay? Mm -hmm. Here's what one of them wrote. I think happiness in life is achieved through balance. So going all in or cutting it all off probably isn't the answer. I recommend keeping in touch with veterans and being part of a community, but don't allow it to be your identity. Your time in the military is part of your story, but it's not your complete identity. As you move into the next chapter, offer yourself grace if you find yourself struggling in certain aspects. Wherever you'll go, you'll always be, so take the most loving version of yourself. Live a life of balance, compassion, and love. And he writes, everything on the planet is meant to serve something other than itself, and humans aren't the exception. Focus on loving and serving others over being self-centered, and things will work out. When I ask you what your mission is, getting connected to your wife, getting connected to your kids, getting connected, making new friends, all of those things are actions in service of a bigger picture. You do those things because they're right and they're holy and they're good, but those are the only way you can be a light in your community. You can do good work. You can pave new sidewalks for my kids that are coming up behind yours, right? Whatever the bigger mission is, and what you've got in your head is a whole bunch of tasks. 
and we've got to come up with a bit with a mission, right? Where are we going to serve? What's that going to look like? We're all in service to something. What are we going to serve? And then how are we going to get to that service? Um, the other buddy, she says, if you stay connected, you'll have so many resources available to you that you can explore. She mentioned military one source to set her up with a great civilian counselor, start unpacking stuff and repack all that in a way that's healing to you. I would take advantage of the resources. I would also tell those guys, hey, we're all I'm we're going out. I'm buying the first round. No military talk. Call it out. <laughs> and two or three of them are gonna go, oh, thank God. And one or two will be like, nah, bro, this is, are you giving up? On, and you'd be like, that's nah, cool. And that you just know, hey, that's not going to be one of my guys. That's fine. It's fine. How does that sound? It sounds good. I mean, it. <laughs> you sound wholly it, unconvinced, know, bro. <laughs> uh, it, no, it's just, uh, I don't know. I guess I got to get to that part of going out with the guys type thing, man. I'm just, uh, let's Dustin, Dustin, you don't got to do anything right now. You've been going for a decade. You've had your minute by minute planned out for 10 years. People have shot at you. And now you're just going to work. Give yourself a minute. Uh, my buddy Ian Simpkins says, if, if busyness is a drug, rest will feel like torture. Does it ever. Right? And you've been busy to keep you alive. You've been busy doing what other people told you to do for 10 years. You just got to learn a new thing, man. That's it. You've been a running back forever and they just stuck you at wide receiver. You got to give yourself some grace. You don't run pass routes before. Just new. You're not broken or damaged or ruined or an idiot or whatever. None of those things. Bad guy. You got to learn new stuff. It's cool, man. You're going to trip and fall, hitting the head with a ball. You're going to drop a few passes. It's fine. Has there ever been one thing that you've had laid in front of you that you just said, I walked away from and said, I can't do this? Never really been an option. <laughs> there you go. This one's not either. So all of this starts with, with um, one big scary proposition. Sitting down with your wife and letting her know, hey, honey, for the first time in my life, I'm scared, like in a real way. Not scared someone's going to shoot me. I'm scared that I don't know what comes next and that I don't have the skills to move forward. Can we do this thing together? Because we're going to have to build something totally new. And I'm almost guaranteed she'll probably weep with you and say I'm all in. Is that, you think so? Yeah, I'd imagine. Yeah. Okay. Take a big, deep breath, as deep as you can. Those big dust in lungs. And hold it. Five, four, three. Exhale and drop your shoulders all the way down. You deserve sleep. Rambunctious sex with your wife, laughter with your kids, a paycheck, a safe home. And you're just going to learn new skills. Are you in? Definitely, 100%. Yeah. My kids have their life because of guys like you. So from guy to guy, thank you. Appreciate that. And that's not a platitude, and that's just, that's not some little thing I'm going to put on a sign and post it on Instagram. That's me telling my brother Dustin, thank you. And I'll walk with you as, as much as I can. You can call me every show if you want. We'll just have Dustin section every show if you want to <laughs> as you figure this thing out. Because listen, you're, you're, you're one of the brave few because there's millions walking through this just like you. And they think they're crazy. They think it's their wife's gone mad. They think that their husband's an idiot. They think that their kids are... And their bodies are screaming at them, hey, we're alone. We're not, we're not safe. Their bodies are screaming at them saying, we've got no mission. 
Where are we going to serve next? And then we're going to backfill that. Cool? Definitely. I love you, man. And I'm grateful for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Homework assignment number one. Ask those knuckleheads that you work with. We're going out. We're all going out in not one military conversation. In fact, I'm going to make it so weird for you. Oh, I can't, this is, I can't even believe it. I didn't think of this. I'm going to make it super weird. I'm going to send you a few questions for humans packs. And I know, <laughs> I know when you pull them out, those guys are going to look at you as though you've just gotten a fourth head. As though you were like, hey, you mind if I like kiss all y'all's wives? That's what they're going to look at you. And you're going to say, nope, we're doing this. And it's going to give you some avenue, however <laughs> much grief you're going to take for this avenue. We may come up with a, a pack for veterans, man, just to give them something to talk about other than, hey, remember the time? Practice new skills, how to have conversations, how to look into the future instead of living that past. Um, stay on the line here. Jenna's going to hook you up. We'll give you, I'll give you a, big, a bunch of them. Um, and to give you all something to talk about. I'm proud of you, and I'm grateful for you, my brother. <laughs>